We are talking about moving ahead with God, the global phenomena of diaspora. Uh, friends, uh, people on the, have been on the move from time immemorial. Very few people today live in the geographical area where they were born. Uh, if we think long and hard, you will realize most of us have come from somewhere else, even it was centuries or decades ago. In the last 30 years, the people on the move has become a global phenomena. The, this phenomena now touches most countries of the world. You might be surprised to learn that 3% of the global population uh, lives in countries in which they were not born. The latest research reveals to us something uh, over 200 million people live in countries outside their homeland. What are the causative factors? There are several causative factors. Uh, number one, natural disasters. When we talk about natural disasters, we include uh, earthquakes and, and famines, uh, tsunamis, uh, uh, it could be uh, floods, uh, and, uh, and many other natural disasters. But we also have man-made disasters, uh, disasters that were created because of human, error, uh, human action or human error, like chemical pollution or ecological crisis. We also have the third causative factor, oppressive environments, uh, political, uh, political environments, religious oppression, uh, and, and we also have the fourth reason, economic and educational needs and opportunities. Many, many people around the world are looking for opportunities uh, to advance their educational career, go to places of uh, higher learning, and so people on the move. So in the last 30 years, the scale of people on the move is larger, the scope is wider, the rate is greater, there's no reason to believe this global phenomena is going to slow down anytime soon. This phenomena is going to grow in greater strength and greater speed in years to come. When we talk about, uh, when we talk about uh, the scattered people, there's a term that's used, we, we call it diasporas. The working definition of diasporas. The word diaspora uh, comes from the, uh, from the Greek uh, word, uh, a diaspora, which means referred to the Jewish dispersion. When, when Jews were forced out of their land because of a foreign takeover under the Assyrians, you'll, uh, 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 Jews were moved out uh, because of judgment of God. Uh, by the time the New Testament comes, six to eight percent of the Jews lived outside the uh, out uh, were diaspora Jews. Secondly, uh, you see this word used in the New Testament. Three times it's used in the New Testament. We are not going to go and unpack each of those occasions. I want you to know it refers to not just Jewish diaspora. We are talking about Christians of Jewish heritage who now moved out of Palestine for different reasons. Over the, over the years, the term diaspora has, turned, has gained increasing popular use. Uh, so the working definition, the working definition that we are using in this, in this track is people on the move. Anybody who is on the move that goes beyond the nat national borders. I know the term now migration is referred to any people movement within or outside the country. But the word diaspora, we are using it in, in, in the context of people crossing national borders, people on the move. What's God's, yeah, what's God's purpose for diasporas? I believe God is very intentional uh, in, the purposes, uh, in, the pur in his purpose for diasporas. God of the Bible is a living creator. And this living creator, this living uh, creator is on a mission. Uh, our, our God is a living God. The reason we are in Luzon uh, uh, this week, uh, Luzon 3, is because we believe God is on the move. God is on a mission. And he is the author of mission. He seeks, he sends, he saves. And our God is on the move. 
And we see that uh, right from, from the uh, we see that right from, uh, from, from Genesis. In Genesis, uh, God made a covenant with Abraham. And that was that his descendants will be the vehicle of blessing to the nations. A very foundational passage of scripture that most of us know is Genesis 12 verses 1 to 3. Uh, now the Lord said to Abraham, go forth from your country and from your relatives and from your father's house to the land which, will, will, which I will show you. And I will make you a great nation and I will bless you and make your name great. And so you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. And the one who curses you, I will curse. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. The phrase families of the earth could be translated as nations or people groups of the earth. God, in calling Abraham, had a purpose. And the purpose was that Abraham and those who come in his lineage will become a blessing to the nation. A very foundational passage of scripture. But friends, we need to know uh, that was carried out, uh, secondly, uh, in the Great Commission. The Great Commission of Jesus, recorded in every account of the Gospels, recorded in the first chapter of the book of Acts. But we want to look at uh, Matthew chapter, uh, chapter 28, very foundational passage of Scripture again talking about the Great Commission, where Jesus said, Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Friends, when he talked about making disciples of all the nations, he was not just referring to people who are stuck in their homeland. He was referring to every people group, uh, including those who are in diaspora. Whatever size, wherever they go, we have a responsibility to reach out to them with the gospel. So friends, the Great Commission uh, demands that we evangelize people on the move. Fourthly, the reality of God being on a mission is highlighted in the Apostle Paul's Sermon on the Mount in Athens. Acts chapter, uh, Acts chapter 17, a very rich passage of scripture, but I'm going to focus on verses 26 to 27 of Acts 17. And he made from one man every nation of mankind to live on all the face of the earth, having determined the appointed times and the boundaries of their habitation, that they would seek God. If perhaps they might grope for him and find him, and though they, uh, he is not far from each one of us. There are three truths that we can extract from just these two verses of Scripture as it relates to the diaspora. Number one, that God, God sovereignly orchestrates places and times where and when people live. It's God who orchestrates. God is sovereign. God is in charge. It, nothing surprises him uh, when people move or people are forced to move. It's God who sovereignly orchestrates where people live and, and, where, and where they live and when, when, where, where they live uh, in, 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 in the world. Secondly, uh, the moving of people is, is, is in God's hand and not in the hands of governments. So immigration is not ultimately in the hands of government. Emigration is not in the hands of gov government. A migration is not in the hands of government ultimately. It is God who is sovereign. He, he knows the movement of every individual. He knows the movement of every family. He knows the movement of an ethnic group. And it is under God's sovereignty. The third fact that we extract from this passage scripture in Acts 17 is the fact that God moves people to different places to fulfill his purposes. And what is his ultimate purpose? That they would seek God. 
that they would see God. Yes, they could have sought God in any place where they came from. But I want you to know one of the most uh, global reality is this. When people move to a new place, they become very curious. When people go to a new place, their assumptions are re-evaluated. When people go to a new place, there is a fresh thinking of looking at the same things in a different way. And as you study the book of Acts, you'll find there are many, many people who came to Christ far away from home. And friends, I, I believe God moves people so that they have another opportunity to see God. And, and it's also an established fact. People on the move have a, a greater reliance on supernatural things than people who are not on the move. And so, friends, I want you to know God is in charge. And God moves people for one purpose and, the, uh, and that one purpose that they would see God and find him, and find him to be their Savior and Lord. As, as, we, as we continue, the examples of scattered people. Uh, there's going to be many more examples given to you. But let me give you some glaring examples. 1.1 million Arabic-speaking Muslims live in Argentina. 1.1 million Arabic-speaking Muslims live in Argentina. They need the gospel. They need to be reached. As we are committed to reaching Muslims wherever they live. Let me give you another example. 312,000 Han Chinese live in UK. 110,000 of them live in Cuba. You want to reach the Han Chinese, don't just think about geographical China or Taiwan, or Southeast Asia. We need to look at where God has moved those people, and we need to reach them. 143,000 Spanish Jews live in Israel. 104,000 Punjabi-speaking Sikhs live in Sri Lanka. Yes, they live in UK and they live in Canada, but I want you to know 104,000 Punjabi speaking Sikhs live in Sri Lanka, so far away from Punjab. But friends, they are a people group that needs to be reached. 117,000 Bengali speaking Muslims in the United Arab Emirates. And we can go on listing tons of people, numbers of people who are far away that need to be reached with the gospel. What God is doing is in accordance to his will, to his work, and to his word. We believe God is unscrambling the nations of the world. I believe God is using all the means to unscramble the nations of the world to bring in a mega harvest globally. I believe God is doing a new thing. I believe he's doing a new thing so that he gives us another opportunity to reach them. And the church must embrace this new global reality of people on the move. And we must strategize. We must put on our missiological eyes and look at new possibilities all around us. Because I believe God wants to reach the people on the move. He, he wants them to be in his church, the body of Christ, that we live and function and represent here at Luzon 3.